Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to New Jersey. Today in the barn shop, we've got the apron off here, and it's pretty grody, so I'm wearing the uh, orange gloves here. Uh, take it apart, see how it works, clean it up, paint it, that sort of stuff. All right, so we'll start by taking just this stuff off the front here. Okay, hand wheel friction clutch. Lucky these are loose because all of the stuff turns. That means I can pull this worm wheel out. How's this? Not too chowdery. It's it's definitely got some wear on it, but not terrible. Mothers. paper pin and there's a set screw that will set that to the cam wheel we'll let that think about it for a while Come on. There we go. So what happened at this juncture is that it got so hot in the shop that my phone overheated and reset. I just proceeded to take the apron apart off camera and it came apart without too much difficulty. Did have to pull out one dirty trick uh, you can see it here. I, I took the hand wheel shaft and the little gear on it and meshed that to the clutch gear and the crossfeed gear. That gives that gear system two ratios, which means it won't turn at all. The other tricky part about this is that the, the threads on the clutch knob are left-handed, and I just use a pair of channel locks and just kind of reefed on it and it came apart. So we got everything painted here and we're going to start the reassembly, but first I wanted to show you how this friction clutch works because it's uh, pretty primitive and I thought it was pretty interesting. You can see here that there's just a taper on this worm gear here. This engages the worm that's driven by the lead screw. This has uh, the opposite taper just machined in this here. So this actually frictions metal to metal there. You would think there'd be like a paper cone or something like that, but that's the way it's designed. I've kind of thought about like machining a bit of Delrin or something to go in there to maybe give it a little more slip, but we'll just put it together like they did when they first made it. So first thing to go in, this is the selector for the forward feed or the cross feed. Okay. This is a uh, cam that kind of locks out the lead screw if this is in not neutral. Maybe I needed to put this in first. No, nope, no, nope, didn't. I was just going to take a little persuasion. This is the eccentric, they call it, that cams this in the right direction. So this goes in the front. As with most things in this lathe, this is a really nice sliding fit. And I'm pretty sure I've got this in upside down, actually. This actually has to go in this way. There's a guide for this eccentric here. Very, very fine fits on all of this. Jeweler's persuasion here. There it goes. Okay, that goes that way. 
It's got a wee spring here that holds it. Okay, so the clutch gear just goes in like that. keep that engaged what we'll do is we'll put the clutch on again this is the left-handed thread so to drive this into this bevel here what you do is you turn this in the this way direction and that bears against the nut that's holding it down here and pushes these pushes this this taper together now there's the selector gear that goes this way, and the hand wheel gear. Ah, I have this the wrong way around. I'll tell you, the build quality on this stuff is just amazing. I mean, it's it's 70 years old, and it uh, some of these gear fits just feel like they're brand new. These are all hardened, hobbed gears. This shaft is surface ground. Just very, very high quality. It's really amazing what they used to do. And yeah, it just fits like, like a bolt in a rifle. Okay, we have the half nut cam. And if we turn this, turn that. You see this has a little detent spot in it there. There's a ball and spring over here that lets this stay cammed in the right position. It's gonna kind of pack this in here some. Okay, our lower half nut. Okay. All right, so that's it fully engaged. So you can see how when this is in the right position here, your half nuts can engage. Whereas if you're in an automatic feed mode, you don't want to engage the half nuts. Okay, now the back assembly here. And this just fits over. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? This has to hold oil. I'm gonna put some Permatex. here, this back here, okay, that's important, okay, there's that, I think we might be able to let the nuts do the rest of it, I didn't really clean up these nuts, do these bolts all that much because no one's going to see them, if you don't tell anybody, I won't tell anybody either. Start with the hand wheel. It's got a little wood rev key. Oh wow. There it goes. Okay, that's tough enough. So let's put some worm gear in. And that is similarly held in place with this arrangement. Let's throw my nuts around.
detent spring in here. It just goes. The belt and braces arrangement here, they've got taper pin as well as a set screw. Okay, and we've got a little grub screw here just you now because. I think maybe putting the hand wheel on first is a bad choice. So. Okay, ain't going nowhere. That's it. That's our uh, that's our our apron done, and we'll continue by taking apart the compound and doing the same thing to it. Start by taking out the the Acme nut. Should actually free this right off. Okay, that's that part did. I'm doing is driving this bearing out uh, to the end of its woodruff key and just seeing if that'll push out that key. Mm, that's how that worked. Okay. So this is threaded into the main body here and you can grab it with the spanner there but that is going to be in there quite tight. Give it some All right. Let's try it. Okay. That and that didn't get too chowdered. Could be better. Little Acme guy there. I'm going to put this in the rust bucket too because the anti rusting agent is very good at removing paint. Okay. These just lock the gib screws in place. And then gib adjusting screws. When I first got this lathe, I couldn't even see any of the indications on the compound. I didn't even know that there was an indication there until I read the manual on it and said that the, there was an angle indicator on there. It was nothing but rust. Uh, just did some quick scotch bright to find out it was there. So this gib just pops out there and that's a bunch of old grease holding it in. Okay, parts washer. So we've got our cross slide painted and this is set up. It's no longer tacky, so I'm ready to go for assembly. But, and you notice these machine ways. I was very careful not to um, not to go too aggressive with a uh, with a wire brush or a scraper or anything like that, because if you look really closely at these, and I don't know if this is going to show up on camera, but you can still see some of the some of the hand scraping. Uh, that was there. So that says that these have worn pretty good. They're not completely clapped out. So I've been careful to try and leave that because if it ain't broke, don't fix it or fix it until it is. This goes meow, this goes meow. Okay, then this little guy comes in here. And 
next time the button's up. It's good enough for the girls I date. Now we just get this in here. Keyway in line. Okay. Not too difficult. All right. Now to get this key in. Tap, tap, tap. Make sure that's good and tight. Okay, so this guy just. Okay, and now we put this together. Ah, you see, the keyway here, this nut needs to key in exactly there, okay. Okay, so now it's just down to adjusting the gib so that there's no play that way. Let's okay, I'm guessing here I have never actually adjusted a gib before, but this this wants to be just tight. But once it takes resistance, you've over tightened it. Okay, so that's turning freely. Okay. So then I'll just turn these lock nuts in here. Okay. Okay, so that's full travel. Feels pretty good the whole way. That's what we got for the compound. Done.